Welcome, my name is Ed Hughes. This is Exploring Exponents, part two of two. Use the number line to understand exponents a little better. Well, let's get started. Here's the number line. We'll put zero here as a reference. Numbers to the right. Increase, one, two, three. Numbers to the left, decrease. Minus one, minus two, minus three. The number line can represent anything. It could be years, um, pounds. In this case, we're gonna represent exponents. These numbers are going to be exponents. We're going to work with uh, 10 as our base and let's start out uh, with uh, 10 squared exponents 2 10 squared has a value of 100 10 times 10 exponent 3 that means 10 cubed 10 times 10 100 times 10 again a thousand Uh, let's go one more to the fourth. 10 to the fourth, 10,000. All right. Well, we can see that as we go to the right, each one of these numbers gets 10 times larger, or as we go to the left, 10 times smaller. So a good guess for 10 to the first would be 10 times smaller than a th uh, than 100, 10. 10 times smaller than 10, 1. There's no reason to stop. There's no reason we can't keep going. 10 times smaller than 1, 0 0.1. 10 times smaller, 0 0.01. 10 times smaller, 0.01. Now, one thing we can see here is that the uh, idea that the uh, exponent tells you how many zeros uh, go after the number. You see here's one, there's one zero, two, two zeros, three, three zeros, four, four zeros. Um, works real good on the right side, but it doesn't work here on the left side. So if you ever repeat that rule, make sure you say it for positive uh, exponents. The better rule would be to say that the exponent tells you uh, how many places to move the de decimal point. This one has an implicit decimal point, 1.0, okay? So when we have an exponent of one, it says move it over one place. And now we have 10. And if we had 10 like that, the two tells you to move it over an additional place or two places from the 1.0. Okay. And on the negative exponent, it means move the decimal point to the, to the left. So here we move it one place, two places, three places. So remember that the number line shows clearly that we just can't say the exponent tells you to uh, how many zeros to add because it's not quite true. The point one has no zeros. All right, now let's take a look at here and let's look at this range right here from one, two, and three. We notice the, these intervals are one unit, so they're even. So the two is, is in the middle between one and three, but the hundred is not. Between 10 and a, a thousand, we're talking 990. But by the time we got to the middle, we've only moved 90. And we have not, in the next interval, we're gonna move 900. That's the nature of exponents, is things get faster and faster and faster, or they, okay? So, 
keeping that in mind, let's close in here and look at this interval between 1 and 2. What do you imagine, if, if 10 to the first is 10, what do you imagine that right here, 1.001, an exponent of that, what would that be? Well, a good guess would be a number a little teeny bit bigger than 10. So, looking at the number line, we can, for the first time now, see that exponents don't have to be integers. What do you imagine that 1.999 as an exponent would be? 10 to the 1.999. What do you imagine that would be? Well, a good guess would be that it's close to 100, very close to 100, and you'd be correct. All right, now let's do something a little harder. Let's focus in here. Well, these are the exponents, 10 to the first, 10 to the What do you imagine that 10 to the 1.5 would be? Now, you might be tempted to say, since this is 10 and this is 100, that you might say, well, 50. And you'd be wrong. Remember what we saw here, is that the thing goes faster and faster and faster. From here to here was 90, from here to here was 900. Okay, if this were halfway in between, say 50, okay, it would say that the speed here is the same as the speed over here. Because here you've gone, uh, well, close to it. Here you've gone 40 and here you've gone uh, 50. Okay, you're saying that roughly the same speed. But we know that it goes faster and faster and faster and faster. So, in fact, it's not 50. The number of one, uh, 10 raised to the 1.5 would be around 33. Okay, if you saw the first lecture, you know why. Okay, um, 10 to the 1.5 is equal to 10 to the first multiplied by 10 to the 0.5, okay? Because when you multiply, you add exponents. And 10 to the 0.5 is the square root of 10. Three times three is nine, and roughly 3.2 times 3.2 would get us close to 10. So this number is 10, this is 32, or or three point, uh, very close to uh, 3.2. So when you multiply it, you get a number like close to 33. And that makes sense. So from here to here, we've gone 23. From here to here is a 67. Okay, So it shows that on the second half, we go much faster. All right, well, the nice thing then about using the number line and playing with putting exponents on it is that you can understand negative exponents, 0, 1, and fractional or decimal exponents, okay? And you also get our appreciation of how they appreciate, uh, how, uh, how they accelerate as they go up. From here to here, 900, and from here to here, 9,000, okay? Um, in fact, this is often referred to as a logarithmic scale, that the numbers do not go up evenly. And a logarithmic scale is used to make a XY chart of values that increase very, very quickly. Uh, for example, if you were dealing with the uh, back bacteria multiplying, bacteria population, okay? Initially, you have very small numbers. You start out with uh, one and it doubles to two, then four, then eight, then 16. So the first interval on the uh, y-axis of the scale, it would be, uh, so let's draw it here. This is the x-axis, but it would be time, and this would be the y-axis, but it would really be population. 
you start out here at low times with a very small increase, you know, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. But before long, when you're over here a little bit, now you're up into the, uh, into the millions. And you can't represent 2 here and a million here on this small scale. So what you use is a logarithmic scale where this is the, an exponent. 1, 2, 3, 4. And where this is the power of 10. So down here, you've got the resolution for 2, 3, and 4. I'm sorry, 2, 4, 8, 16. And as the population builds up between here and here, you can represent the, uh, as we saw there, 9,000. And on the next one, it'll be 90,000. And you don't have to go very far up uh, to be in the, in the millions. Um, so that is called the logarithmic scale. And in fact, if you took the power of 10 curve, it would be very steep like this, and you plot it on a logarithmic scale, it actually turns out to be straight.